But uh, I think in combat, uh, it's a day-to-day -day proposition. You live from day to day, from minute to minute, and uh, you, you're scared every time you go up to the front line, but once you're in combat, you're too busy. And, and the need of the moment swallows you up. In this case, it's the need of the wounded for me to uh, give them as much comfort as possible. And, uh, and on the full first second, we had a great many casualties. And they were men like Joe Sicardo here who went forward and we would try and the medic would have to pick him up again wounded and it was always very sorry for me to see replacements come in at night shake their hands i only got to know their names the next morning uh, either they survived which was already to the good but many times they had to show that they were brave and they i knew they were scared but they had to show they were brave and they did silly things and uh, they might have been killed. So it was tough for me to say, shake the hands at night and pick them up the next morning. Thank you, Kelly. Um, now we'll go to the other end of the, of the globe, to Burma. And I'd like to ask uh, Grant uh, Hirabayashi, who was with the Merrill's Marauders, to say a few words. But uh, may I make, a, make the comment that in Grant's case, uh, Burma, jungle, uh, dysentery, all sorts of insects. The, the, uh, the Merrill's Marauders march seven, uh, 700 miles to get to their target. Uh, these uh, did not bother uh, Grant as much as one thing. He was allergic to K-rations. <laughs> so Grant, what are you? When the war, when the United States entered the war, <clears throat> uh, President uh, Roosevelt was the word that it was essential that China be kept in the war actively against the Japanese. And in so doing, it, it would tie down the Chinese, uh, Japanese unit, which was stationed in China, and also relieve them from not being dispatched to the South Pacific against the United States. I'm, I'm, I think I'm running dry here. <clears throat> uh, Grant returned yesterday from Japan. <laughs> But, but, <coughs> but <coughs> in order to keep China <coughs> in the war against Japan, it was essential that the Americans supplied the Chinese with the essential war materials. <coughs> Japan had occupied the coastal areas and also occupied the only land supply line, which was the Burma Road. In August of 1944, the, uh, 1943, the leaders of the Allied power met in Quebec, and it was decided that they would send a unit to Burma, an American unit to Burma, to operate behind Japanese enemy, a uh, Japanese line, to destroyed their stronghold to reestablish the Burma Road and also to occupy the Mishno airfield. President Roosevelt asked for three, uh, volunteers for a dangerous and hazardous mission. And by War Department estimate, 
they anticipated 85% casualties. 3,000 Americans volunteered to form the 5307 Composite Unit Provisional, better known as the Merrill's Marauders, and uh, we fought behind enemy line for a period of seven months. And there were 14 uh, Americans of Japanese ancestry who were among the 3,000. <clears throat> and our mission was to serve as the eyes and ears of the marauders by translating captured documents, diaries, and interrogating POWs, and also uh, did crawl up to the enemy line to listen to their conversation tap into their communication lines. Grant, yes. I can come back to you uh, after maybe you have one of these mints. Um, um, I'd like to twist the question just a little for, uh, for George Sakato, uh, Medal of Honor recipient. And of course, as we all know, uh, the Medal of Honor is accorded to a person uh, who, has ser uh, who has performed with valor over and beyond the call of duty. And so with George, I'd like to ask George, for winning the Medal of Honor, there must have been something that uh, inside of you triggered you to do something. Uh, and would you explain that case? When I volunteered for service, I didn't know what I was getting into. When I got on top of this one hill, all the explosions coming in, blew, I, I didn't know what incoming was and what was outgoing. But I heard incoming. I found out later as I picked myself up 10 feet over there. And, but then I had a few nicks into that. But the other fellow next to me I was talking to, laying on the ground, he got shot here in the juggler vein, and I couldn't stop the bleeding. The pulse of the blood was just coming out. <laughs> and then I said, then the artillery started coming in a little more. I crawled into my helmet, and I said, what in the hell did I sub volunteer for this? I stuck my foot out to get hit, couldn't get hit. So three or four different hills we have finally got going through. And this one hill that overlooks the valley is Hill 617. I don't know if you folks can see it from here or here. But I, from memory, I knew what this hill looks like. We were on this opposite side of the field looking over and trying to cross this valley. The railroad tracks here. And I have to cross another meadow to get to this hill. Every time we got across, the machine guns would up here, which had mortar shells up here would come down on us. And I says, no. So after that, we ran around at night. And we got on the trucks and then got behind this hill. And then we crossed into the enemy line and we were on back of the reverse of this hill. All night we traveled holding on to each backpack. And as we traveled, night, and at dawn we started our attack. Now we got the Germans surprised. We got around them. So our, my unit was in by the hill there. We took the machine guns out, and we went, and then the others took the motor hill on top, and we were down to the bottom here, and the artillery cells started coming in, and I was in a foxhole. Kelly was attending a one of the wounded soldiers, and he got a German haircut. The bullet hit, since spun around in his helmet, and dropped down one inch more, and he wouldn't be here today. <laughs>